serve you more faithfully. And the believer shall say, put your hands together because you love Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Good to see you out this evening to Bible study. And because it's Bible study, you know what we're going to do. We're going to study the Bible. Amen. All right. Let's look in the book of Colossians chapter 1 as we continue talking on our midweek service, fruitful in every good work. Fruitful in every good work. It is the will of God that every child of God no exception to that rule. Every child of God be fruitful in every good work. And whatever work God call our hands to or call us and equip us uh, as an assignment, that become our work and we should be fruitful in it. Amen. I, know, I don't know about you, but that should be high on your priorities that you want to be a fruitful Christian because Jesus said, who said it? Jesus said, by being fruitful, you glorify your Father, which is in heaven. How many of you want to make God look good? How many of you want to make God shine? Well, that's exactly what you do when you're a fruitful Christian. You got Colossians 1, let's read verse 10. I'm reading from the New King James. Your translation is good. It says that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. Fully pleasing who? Fully pleasing the Lord. That's right. And this is how you fully please him, being fruitful in how many good works? Every good work. And what else you should do? Increase in the knowledge of God. You should do what? Increase in the knowledge of God. Matter of fact, you're the growing grace and in the knowledge of God. When you don't grow in God's knowledge as a Christian, you're not walking in the scriptures like you should. Because that's a command from the Lord. When the Lord asks something from us, do you think he's saying, if you would, pretty please? No, 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 that's not a suggestion. That's a command. He commands me and you to grow in him, to grow in him. He don't want us to be stunt. He wants us to grow. And growth is the byproduct of the knowledge of who God is. You keep getting an accurate knowledge of who God is, you will grow. Your capacity to believe God will grow. Huh? You ought to want to be able to believe God more this year than you did in 2016. Talk to me. You say, why? Well, you done had 12 more months to learn more about God. That's why you should believe more. Amen. Are you listening to me? And so then God have to enlarge your capacity to believe him for the things he want to bring to pass. And the believer shall say. All right, let's look at our next passage of scripture here. As we see now, the Lord want us to be fruitful in every good work. He also says to us in our next passage of scripture that we're using for foundation, and that's in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to see we've been saved for good works. We've been saved for what? Now, I know somebody said, no, I was saved for heaven. No, you just die, you'll go to heaven. But to do good works, you have to make a decision that you're going to do them. Amen. And that you're going to make that a priority for your Christian faith. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, sometimes you got to fight the fight of faith just to obey what God has put in your heart. You got to do it. Amen. It don't come easy sometimes. Amen. Please deliver me from this preacher, Mike. I felt the preacher start coming up on me. Lord, help me. <laughs> Thank you.
let's look at verse 8 of that particular book. So uh, the Lord called us to be fruitful in every good work. And then in Ephesians 2, and we're going to pick up at verse 8, we'll see that we're saved for good works. And then we're going to take you into how, uh, why God commands and, and how to be fruitful. That's one thing to ask of you to be a fruitful Christian, but it's another thing when the Lord tells us how to be, is, isn't that good news? Verse 8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is what? A gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for what? God created me and you for good works. Can't get around it. And we don't want to. He said, created for good works, which God pre prepared beforehand that we should what? You, you've been called to walk in them or do them. Amen. Walk in them is another word for doing it. And, uh, and of course, I, I know I put some shock waves on you when I told you. Uh, you can come to church and sit in the chair and be fruitless, can't you? So just showing up don't make you fruitful, right? Now, then let's look at St. John chapter 15 because it's the Lord Jesus who called me and you to be fruitful believers. He got, he got some strong things to say about you when you are fruitful, and he got some strong things to say to you when you're not fruitful. Amen. But I'd rather be on the fruitful side. Uh, amen. Because uh, the Lord uh, is one day going to reward me and you for our fruitful life here on planet Earth. We saw when the Lord had uh, reckoned with those who had uh, he gave one five talents, one two talents, and one one talent. This is amazing. The Bible says the man with the five, he doubled it, and he got a commendation from the Lord. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You was faithful over a few things. Now I'm making you ruler over many things. Listen at the reward. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord, which has been prepared for you. I don't know what all we're going to get on planet Earth, but it's more in store for the believer who will be faithful and fruitful. And the believer shall say. And so that means in 2017, whatever adjustments you got to make, you make them. Amen. Because whether you know it or not, this come to you. I don't care what level your life is on. No matter your level as a believer, you, me, it doesn't matter. Everybody, God purges them to bring forth more fruit. Everybody, I don't care the level you're on, if you're on, if you're on top of your game, as it were, he still see that there's more you can do. There's more fruit you can yield. You say, how much more? Well, that's the potential he doesn't put inside of every believer. Amen. And when he puts a demand on that uh, potential, also it's based upon the several ability that he has given all of us, also the investment he has made in us. Amen. He saved me and you more than from, from, from heaven. Amen. He saved us to be uh, workmen in this earth bearing uh, fruit that he is alive. You'd be amazed how many people think God is dead, that God, Jesus, is a religion. Well, what sets that apart is those who bear fruit. The matter of fact, the Lord told us, don't even, don't even go by when people tell you they're a Christian. He said, hey, how you know a person could say a Christian? I mean, you know that they can say that, and, and none of it's true. Huh? He said, by their what? Fruit. By their fruit, you know them. So that means the, 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 the seal that mocks me and you that we belong to Jesus is that we have fruit in our life. Amen. And that that fruit should remain. It's not here today and gone tomorrow. How I many of you praise God for that? That when he, that when he, part, that when you partake of his will, it, it is something that lasts. It is here. 
Glory to God. Amen. Transforming lives, changing lives through your faith, through your fruit. Hallelujah. You know, that, that's not a lot of people who have an appetite for crab apples. No, it's not, I mean, you know. People like delicious fruit. You know, amen. And so, say John 15, Jesus tell us how to be fruitful believers. How are you going to let Jesus tell you how to be a fruitful believer? Come on, talk to me now. I lost some of you right there. How many are you going to let Jesus tell you how to be a fruitful believer? Tell us, Jesus. Tell us, Jesus. How, how we live to be for good and not no good. You was not saved for no, for no good, for nothing. No, no, no. You have purpose attached to your salvation. You have assignment. You have anointings. The Lord worked on us in his Sunday, didn't he? But we should be serving him. Talk to me. Uh, how many happy that he put that in there himself and said, Tell them I want to be served. Come on. There's some folks that done got at a place in society. They say, we don't have to serve God. And still we're going to be all right. That ain't what the Bible says. God, God said you won't be all right not serving him. Amen. And that the devil have lied to our society. And the pain that man is experiencing right now is in direct proportion to his rebellion to his disobedience to God Almighty. Hmm? Defying, rebelling, and disobeying God. We're not going to join that club. God saved us from that. Now, the Bible talk about you were once children of disobedience. Amen. But now we're the children of obedience. We have the spirit of obedience. That's the kind of spirit men you have. You have a spirit of obedience. It came from God to you. Hallelujah. Listen to what it says. St. John 15, Jesus is talking here. And you're going to learn something this evening for sure. Come on, let's praise God in advance for what you're going to get from him. You're going to learn something this evening. Yes, Jesus. Thank you for blessing us, Lord. He said in St. John 15, verse 1, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. I think King James said the husband, right? He said, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he do what? Who's going to shout over that one? Being taken away. He said, if you don't bear fruit, you're removed. How I many of you know Jesus never lie? He don't know. I'm telling you. Some, some people ain't going to answer the roll call. He said so. What happened? He said, I removed him. Thank you for all that excitement on that. He said, he said, every branch that bear fruit, he purges. He does what? See, so I don't care what level you own. See, it is. The Lord say, if you bring fruit, I'm going to work on anything dead in your life. I'm going to cut away the dead stuff. It, listen, see, that's what people don't understand. It don't matter how anointed you get, he still got some. Now, the difference is he either has some hedge clippers on some people or some, <laughs> or, or some little garden pruners on some. <laughs> some folks, he needs some hedge clippers. Cut away that stuff. Look at your neighbor and say, is he talking about you? Is pastor talking about you tonight? No, 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 no. <laughs> but, but when he says, but he said, if you, bring, if you bring forth fruit, he said you will be purged. And you look that word up, that's another word that it meant cleaning. I'm going to clean away anything that take away from purpose and plan. I'm going to move away anything that's dead on the, on the vine. Why? Because it stopped forth life from coming. It hinders life. So every one of us receive from the Lord in seasons cutting away. 
Here's what the Lord told me. He said, most of the time, I says it to you by the word. But so many of his children overrides when the Holy Spirit start telling you, now you're looking at too much television. You're not praying enough. You're not stuck. He's what he's I am purging. And if you follow that, you'll bring forth more fruit. If you ignore it, come on, talk to me, somebody. Then you find yourself being frustrated in things. Because you're clean through the word. Same word. The Bible said, he said, you're clean through the word which I've spoken. Same word he used for purge or pruning, it's the same word clean that he used right there. So the word, the tool that he used to clean us, to prune us, how many you glad it's not thunder and lightning? Huh? Or a truck to run across the path and make you run out of the ditch. That ain't what clean us up. He sends his word. And it cleans us. And it strengthens us. And it builds us. And it corrects us and it exalt us, come on, talk to me, so that we'll be fruitful. Now, when you're, not, when you're staying barren year after year, it's because you're not taking instruction when that word talked to you. And the Lord said he's not going to tolerate that. He said it. I didn't say it. He said it. So how many, how many of you think it, it would be all right if we say uh, next month we're going to have a pruning convention? A purging. <laughs> it ain't all right. Okay, then I go on then. Well, how many show up? I say, this month we're going to have a taking away service. Well, you say you're going to be on one side or the other. Either you're going to be purged or you're going to be taken away. I think I'll take the latter. The purging. Amen. Nobody can get around it. I don't care how you show up on Sunday, how spiritual you look or how spiritual you don't look. Your life goes through this with Jesus. No exception. And the better you listen to the instruction that he gives you, the more fruitful you'll be. When we live in, when we live in barren, you see the Lord even spoke to a tree that didn't have fruit. He said, no man will eat from you here after forever. Under the old covenant, barren was a curse, and it shall not be among us. Let's praise God right now. It shall not be among us. Hallelujah. For the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. We are life givers. Everywhere we'll go, we are, we are, we are giving off God's fragrance, lifting people, helping people, strengthening people, and blessing them. Have a lot of fun, but don't forget what your purpose is. Do the work that God assigned your hands to do for, before man, but don't forget what your purpose is. Esther was raised up a queen over Persia, but she was a deliverer for the nation. Two treats in one, and that's the way God works. You may have a title before man, but you have an anointing before God. And he said that anointing is to bring forth, yield, fruit. Hallelujah. You blessed? Let's thank him right now. Come on, let's thank him. Let's thank him. Let's, let's read on here. He says, so he says, he takes away in every branch that bear fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth what? More fruit. Come on, come on, declare that out your mouth. Thank you, Lord. More fruit in my life. Look what he said in verse 3. He said, you are clean because of the word which I've spoken to you, or you are purged by the word. Say it with me. I'm purged by the word. You better know it. Now, what we need to respect about God's word, Ecclesiastes said in verse 8, uh, chapter 8, verse 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Where the word of a king is, there is power. So whenever God give a word, there's power laced in that word to fulfill and bring to pass everything that word says. Isn't that wonderful? We ain't just left with information only. 
The word bring empowerment. The word bring empowerment. Say that with me. The word. So if God sends a word to purge you for more fruit, guess what? That word empower you to produce more fruit. It empower you to produce more fruit. Look at that in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 for a moment. Let's look at that. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. Where the word of a king is, there's power. I remember when Peter was walking, when Peter, when Jesus was walking on the water and they were in the boat and then Peter said, if it, if, if it be you, Lord, bid me to come. And all Jesus said, you can't find nothing, nothing. he said, come. And it was so much power in that word to Peter that he got off that boat and started walking on water, defied gravity. I'm telling you, when the Lord give you a word, it will defy anything and everything that's trying to hold you hostage or stop you from being fruitful. Because where the word of a king is, there's power. Read it with me. Please, that's 8, verse 4. You have it? What it said? Read it. Well, the word of a what? A king is what's behind it. There's power. Power to produce whatever he says. And the, and the believer shall say, all right. Now, then if that be so, listen what the word says to us. In uh, uh, Galatians 5, let's look at it for a moment. Galatians 5, because we see Two things happening over here in Galatians 5. Number one, we see the works of the flesh. So now, how many of you know that's one of your enemies against being fruitful? Come on, how many of you know it? See, the works, the, listen, the works of the flesh is nothing but fruit from the flesh. And the Bible says it will decay. It will rot, didn't it? But the fruit of the Spirit is life and Peace. You get life and peace when you start walking in the things of the spirit. And that born again, recreated spirit man is designed by God to yield fruit now. Amen. And I mean on every side. We're, not, we're talking about a fruitful life and we're talking about fruitful and good works. I said to you, if you're going to be faithful, which is a fruit of the spirit. Now in Galatians 5, it says the fruit of the spirit is faith. But you look up in the translation, it should have been faithful. Faithful. So faithfulness is a fruit of the spirit that's in the inside of our spirit, man. It's right there already. Amen. Fruit of the spirit, faithful. So now, two ways you serve God. You serve God by being faithful, but how? You have to serve God by serving people. You got, you, I don't have time. You got to make some time you're a Christian. You ain't on no island to do nothing. God didn't save you and put inside of you a big zero. Nothing for you to do. Now you say, I don't know what I was, you keep listening. You're going to hear God talk to you. Because he can't, he can't have a will for you and don't reveal it to you. Amen. Huh? That's like telling somebody, go to the store for me. And you say, well, what am I supposed to get? Well, just go. You ain't going to do your kid that way because they'll come back with everything. Huh? All of it's sweet, too. <laughs> huh? So God can't hold me and you to do his will and don't reveal it. We serve God by serving people. Jesus gave us that. That it is the key to promotion in the kingdom of God. Service is your path to promotion. Faithfulness is your key to promotion. Amen. So we serve God by serving people and by, by working the works of righteousness. Righteous works. Amen. Doing righteous works. Is that right? Now, Galatians 5 talk about the fruits of the spirit, but it also talk about the fruits of the flesh. Amen. <laughs> I'm calling it the fruit of the flesh, but that is, is the, uh, Paul called it the works of the flesh, but it's the same thing. Amen. And you know, when, that, when the flesh works, it will produce something. It'll yield something, and you can see the evidence of it. All fruit is is evidence of what's been going on. 
Hmm? You're getting quiet on me, abundant life. Talk to me. This is Bible study. You got Galatians? All right. I think we want to pick up around that verse uh, 16, uh, 18 there. Hold on for a minute. Let me get here. All right. Let's look for a moment. I ain't going to stay on this long because I kind of talked about it a little bit last uh, Wednesday. There. Verse 16. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill what? The lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. Now that word lust there means what? Strong desire. Strong pull. So there's a strong pull of your flesh against your spirit. Now that ain't the holy, that ain't your flesh pulling against the Holy Spirit. That ain't no, it ain't no combat between the Holy Spirit and nobody flesh. That's your born again spirit and your flesh. Amen. Which you are now to be led by. You got it? So the works of the flesh, and the Bible say the flesh lusted or have desires that are contrary to the spirit man on the inside of you, right? Now, if you follow after that fleshly lust, you will never fulfill fruitful things. You will not be fruitful in the things of God. You will not be. If you're yielding to the flesh 24-7, it ain't no accident that you're barren when it comes to the fruitful things of God. Amen. Now, one, both will give a reward. I say both will give a reward. Here's what the Bible says. It says, for the, for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, these are contrary one to the, uh, to, the, to the another so that you cannot do the things that you wish. You know what you should do, but something else is pulling you. Huh? I know what God has put in my heart. I just don't, can't find the, the room to work him in to obey him. What's doing that? Amen. It is fruit, but it's the wrong fruit. Right? Huh? How I many you know we're going to grow some more this year? It's happening right now. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evidence which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, Hatred, contention, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissension, hearsay, envy, murder, and drunkenness, rivalry, and the lights, which I tell you. So Paul said, I just got tired of keep on putting things down there. Say that was that was not all of it. I'm just stopping on you. Isn't it? <laughs> Talk to me in here. But listen to what he said. He said, But I tell you before, and just as I also told you in past, those who practice, what's your King James say? Do. Huh? King, here, New King James says, if you practice it as a lifestyle, what's going to happen? You cannot, in, you cannot get your godly inheritance. You won't get what God has for you. What's, what's the price you will pay? You will give up your inheritance that God has for you by not choosing to walk in a, a life of fruitfulness before the Lord. Now, we know that's, that can happen to you but because we saw two brothers, Esau and Jacob. Huh? And the Bible said he despised his birthright, didn't he? He let hunger and natural temporal pain rob him of his godly inheritance. The Bible said, then he saw the devastation of his choice. He cried, got tearful, fired, and Lord, please, one more. And the Bible said he found no grounds to repent. Why? He despised his birthright. He despised what God had for him. For bold beans. Must have been some pintos had something there, some black eyed peas or something. Come on, talk to me. One of the big turkey legs dumped down in there or something. But it, it robbed him of his inheritance. Let's thank God tonight that nothing will rob us of our godly inheritance 
which the Lord Jesus Christ gave his life for me and you to have. That's abundant life. Oh, yeah, it goes against the flesh, but come on, talk to me. Following the flesh already is why we needed God. Is that right? So ain't no new lessons you're going to get from following the flesh. Talk to me. I, me following it is what drove me to Jesus. Lord, help. That's what I got. Lord, please help me. And he did. I'll never forget him because he helped me. He helped me. I was like David. This poor man cried and the Lord heard his cry and delivered him out of all his troubles. Somebody praise him because you know that same testimony. You know that same testimony. Hallelujah. Yes. It was God who did it. Amen. So the Bible here says, those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, let's go down that list. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, kindness, goodness. What else? My, my Bible says faithfulness. Faithfulness is a fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Gentleness, self-control against such. There's no law. Now watch this. This is what the Bible says. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passion and desire. Well, so what? One of, one of the responsibilities I have as a believer, and one you have too as a believer if we're going to bear fruit, is that every day you got to die with the Lord. Every day. You got to die with the Lord. See, it ain't enough to be crucified on Easter. You got to die daily. And dying daily means that you're not giving vent to the things that the passions and the desires that come upon all man. Talk to me. You have to decide. The Bible said crucify it. You, got, you don't, the people say, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord don't come and crucify your flesh, you do it. Paul said, I brought my body under. Why did Paul have to bring his body under? Because Paul, the great apostle who seen the Lord, come on, talk to me, in Revelations, who wrote more than one third of this New Testament here, he wanted to do things that was not right. But he chose to bring his body under. Amen. He controlled his passions and desires. And guess what? If you're going to have fruit in your life, you got to do the same. Come on, praise God for it. Praise God for it. Huh? You were taking that long. I was going to ask you when the last time you cussed, and you shouldn't be able to remember it. Amen. I said you should have amnesia at that point that you can't even remember. Pastor, I can't remember that. Because <laughs> one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. You control yourself. Give me some help. Let me go on here. I got 15 minutes since you're acting up, so I'm going to have to work out on you now. Come on. <laughs> Let's go over to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, the Lord is going to help us real good. The Lord is going to help us real good. We're clean through the word which he has spoken unto us. Now, one of the, one of the things that the Lord says that, that as we bring forth more fruit, we go to much fruit. And then when you look at St. John 15 verse 16, he said, you didn't choose me. Listen to that. Isn't that awesome? You didn't plan this. Wow, so we got born into God's plan. Come on, say it with me. Thank you, Lord. I got born into your plan, not my plan. See, you, you didn't plan this. God did. He said, you didn't have the plan. I had it. That's why he saved you. He had a plan behind your salvation. That's what, that's what ordained means, planned out. It was a strip 
with your name on it already laid out. And when you got born, you got born into it. So listen to what he said. You didn't choose me, but I chose you, and I have ordained you upon it. Plan, purpose. I have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Herein is my Father glorified that you bring forth much fruit. Jesus said, I plan to use your life to make my father look good. Say it again to us, Jesus. I plan to use your life to make my father look good. See, that ain't old time religion there. You don't get that in religion. That's relationship with God, and that's what you got born into. And the believer shall say, so now, if the Lord have ordained, if the Lord is using his word to clean us, then we need to find now, what is the steps that I actually become a fruitful believer? Because this is where it starts at, but it is not where it ends. 2 Peter chapter 1, he gives us some real good layout here by Peter. All right, 2 Peter chapter 1, listen what it says. Starting at verse 1 of 2 Peter chapter 1, Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you and the knowledge of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many are you glad to discover how grace and peace is multiplied? The more knowledge of God you get, the more grace and peace you walk in. Come on, say it with me. The more knowledge I get, the more peace and grace I walk in. The more knowledge of God you get, the more grace and peace you have. So isn't, it, isn't something wrong when a believer got to be saying, pray for me for, that I have peace? First, it's a fruit inside of you. Second, it come by knowledge of God. And God will grace you with it. You don't, you'll get it directly. You know, it, isn't it better to make a local call than a long distance? Huh? Your bill says it's better. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying, why you got to go to somebody when you can receive it from the Lord? You don't need nobody to pray for you to have more peace. You just need to get more knowledge of God and peace come on you. You're coming into peace and it multiplies. Glory to God, grace and peace. Lord, thank you. All right, let's go on. It says, as his divine nature have given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Are we going to get all things pertaining to life and godliness or do we have it now? We have it now how? By our faith. But to some folk, because they ain't in the word, that's, that means that's not real yet. But if the, if the word of God is real, then you got all things that pertain to knowledge right now, life and knowledge now, amen, through knowledge. All things that pertain to life through knowledge. That's big. I said that's big. And you got it now. Let's go on, though, because we, we're moving into this next phase here. As the divine power have given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who call us to glory and what? Call us to glory and what? Underline that word virtue if you haven't done it yet. Call us to glory and virtue. So you've been called to glory and virtue, right? Now, we'll come back to that one word, by which has been given to us exceeding and great and precious promises that, th that through these you might be partaker of the divine nature, having escaped what? The corruption that is where? In the world, what's the vehicle that the, the devil is using in the world? Through lust. But the Bible said by virtue we escape it. How many of you done escape? How many of you know, how many of you are out of the devil's trap? 
How many of you have escaped it? If you ain't made up your mind, you trapped right now, you have to take these things by faith. Come on, you might be standing behind the fence right now. You have to say, I've escaped it. And God will make a way when you can't even see the way. Now, that word virtue means um, uh, moral excellence. Moral excellence or good character. Listen to me, good character. So the Lord says that the way we're going to escape uh, the traps uh, that's in the world through lust of the flesh is by moral excellence or by good character, which is what? Part of what the Holy Spirit in your spirit now will produce as fruit. Amen. As you yield in fruit, it keep you free. The, uh, against such, there's no law. There's no trap of the devil that can take men and women captive that are fruit producers. Come on, praise God. <laughs> fruit producers in the house. You know what? When you start producing fruit, you don't even have to beg people to come to church with you. They'll start saying, what church you go to? Huh? Well, I'm serious. They'll say, what church do you go to? What do you believe? They want to know. They don't even care what you believe sometimes. <laughs> what time y'all having service? I'm coming. Because they see something. Amen. Now, so the Bible here says, verse 5, but also, for this very reason, give all diligence, add to your faith virtue. So we're supposed to add to the faith that it takes to please God. What? Virtue, moral excellence. It ain't enough to say, I'm, I, I can believe God. I believe I receive. I'm claiming my house. I'm claiming my car. I'm claiming this. I'm claiming my husband, my wife. Claim all that. Use your faith. But the Bible says, if your faith going to produce results, faith which work it by love. But Paul Peter said, you must add to your faith virtue. If you don't add to your faith virtue, you will have a barren faith life. Talk to me. Uh, 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 you'll be a person, I got faith, but there's no fruit in it. Because why? It is necessary that we have moral excellence or good character. That's a fruit. Amen. Hallelujah. This is really Christian maturity, ain't it? saying with that we got to put down the pacifiers and the ballers. Huh? And some of us who've been sucking our thumb. Got to stop all that and grow up in the Lord. Say, I must grow up in the Lord. 2017 is my year of growth. Godly growth. You ain't trying to impress nobody. You do, you, you wanting to please the Lord. That we walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, fruitful in every good work. I'm doing it to please the Lord. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So number one, we need grace and peace to be multiplied. So that it bring, so that through the knowledge of God, it brings us to be partaker of his divine nature. But once I am partaker of his divine nature, I must add to my faith. Number one, goodness. Write it down. Goodness or moral excellence. Moral excellence or good character. Hallelujah. We need to get a good, we need to get a name that we're a good man, a good woman. Huh? Uh, we can say that about other people, but when, when are other people going to say that about us? We got the Spirit of God in us. We're saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost, filled, and fire baptized and running. We got that, but we're supposed to be morally good. Amen. That your name should have a good report to it. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Moral excellence. Praise God. That, 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 that you, you, you're somebody that we can say, hey, we want to be like her. We want to be like him. Huh? And not just want to be like Mike. Want to be like Jesus. Hallelujah. The life giver. So, so we must add to our faith, right? And the first thing, he, the first additive he gives is moral excellence, good conduct, good character. We ain't cussing folks out no more. Huh? We ain't lying and stealing and cheating. We don't stop that. We don't quit that. Because why? All of that is works of the flesh. We can do it, but it's short-lived. It don't last. But this here, he say, a lag is here for the long haul. And when you walk in this, he say, your fruit will remain. It'll stay here. It'll keep preaching when you've gone off the scene. It'll keep blessing when you done, when you done move to your, your house in glory. It'll keep blessing people. Hallelujah. Though he's dead, though she's dead, yet speak it. That means I'm learning from the life they had on planet Earth. You're learning from the life they had. That's God's plan. And the first thing on the list was moral excellence. I got to add, no, notice this. You got to add that to your faith. My faith needs some help. What about yours? I said my faith needs some help. Here's what my faith said need for me. Andrew, my faith need for you to have good conduct. Amen. So that God can confirm his word with signs following in your life. Your days of fruit. <laughs> no, you remember when God gave us that word way back? Huh? There will be no more fruitless believers in the house. Didn't God give us that? Now, now, here's what Jesus said. He said there was a key thing that the devil used. He said the cares of this world, Satan used it to choke the word where that believer is unfruitful. So how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? How am I going to How that's going to happen? I got to do, I got to work this. No, no, the devil will take cares. And choke up what's inside of you. And when it's choked, no fruit can come. Amen. That means that mean our, our faith have to go through some patience, some endurance, and standing, trusting God to make it happen for us. Talk to me. And you feel the pressure. Come on. Lord, time is running out. Come on, talk to me. People pressing in on you, all kinds of stuff. But you got to stand. I say you got to stand. Here's the next thing. He said, add to your faith virtue and to virtue, virtue what? Knowledge. To virtue you add what? Knowledge. The word for knowledge there is wisdom. You need some wisdom in this hour. Don't believe that you can just get by on your own strip. You need some wisdom in this, now, in this hour. You're fooling yourself if you think you're smart enough to handle the times you live in. All of us are. The Bible tells us wisdom will be the stability of the time. It will be wisdom that hold you in place, that hold your life up, that give you the victory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The ability to use knowledge correctly. Look at the knowledge that God has pulled out in Abundant Life Church. Look at the hours of faith you done learned. The, the word of God on victory and how to prosper and how to live victorious. Look at the hours and you have been blessed to have that. And there are some people ain't never heard one hour of a faith message. Not one hour. Hallelujah. Look at the wisdom and the love and the grace God have poured on this church. To whom much is given, much is required. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. No excuse. We don't have any. Huh? We don't have no excuse not to be fruitful believers. There was a man. He, the Bible said he was a vine dresser. And he had been digging and he had a tree. And the Lord came and checked up on the tree. He said, this tree still don't have any fruit on it. Matter of fact, the Bible said it was a fig tree. And he said, this has been three years and there's no fruit. You know what the Lord said? Cut it down. And, and the man was not just a vine dresser, he was an intercessor. He said, Lord, wait a minute, Lord. You'll find that in Luke 13, chapter six, verse 6 through uh, 9. He said, Lord, wait a minute. You better have somebody around you can pray. If you can't, you better know some intercessor. Lord, wait a minute. Don't cut it down yet. And the Lord, why not should I cut it down? He said, Lord, let me dig around it. Let me dung it. Woo, Lord, have mercy. Huh? Let me dung around this tree. That's what he said. He said, then, if you come back next year, if no fruit is here, if fruit is here, fine. But he said, if it's not, cut it down. Wow. But when the Lord came on it and saw no fruit on that vine, he said, cut it down. It's been around here for three years with nothing on it. Cut it. What did he say, though? Cut it down. But somebody got a hold to the Lord and said, wait a minute, Lord, give me one more year to dig around this root. I'm going to dig and I'm going to dunk it. Talk to me, somebody. I'm going to put some miracle growth around <laughs> Help me, Jesus, I'm out of time. <laughs> oh, Lord. Now, was it, is it two places that... We, hey, you would think Jesus don't like feed because <laughs> he saw one fig tree. He said, ain't nobody going to eat from you here after whatever. Came to nothing and wasn't on it. He said, cut it down right now. And the man interceded. How many of you thank God for people who've been interceding around you? And you know what that is? That's the grace of God and the mercy of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because God knows that you got what it takes to be fruitful. And all you need is to get it together and the fruit will start yielding. And sometime in that, in, that, in that window of frustration and challenges, the Lord said, wait a minute, I'm going to grace you some more. I'm going to grace you some more, but I will come back inspecting your vine. And I expect to see something on it. Hallelujah. When he went down that list and Peter, he said, if we get these things working in our life, well, we know how to be kind. All the things that was mentioned in Galatians. Fruitful, self-control, hmm? patient, long-suffering, long-suffering. Who wants some of that? Suffering long. <laughs> Yet it takes that to make it with God. You better hear me. There are some things God will allow you to suffer long in it. I don't blame you. I don't even want to know where that verse of Scripture is at. But it's in the Bible. And during that time, God disciplined us. Watch this. He said, if you're his child, he will discipline you. He will correct you that you will yield the fruit of holiness, which come through pain. 